Uh, good afternoon, everyone from around the world, speaker, moderator, and audience. Uh, I'm on behalf of the director of the board, director of CSHA and the SAM Society under Royal Patonet. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you to our session today. I, I, I would like to give you some information about CSHA. Who, who, for those who maybe already knows, like I just to repeat, but for who, who, whoever a newcomer, I would like to let you know what is exactly Sisha. Sisha, the full name is Southeast Asian Cultural Heritage Alliance. We are the digital based network of Southeast Asian civil society organization engaged in cultural heritage conservation work. We are the group of the people and organization who love in our cultural heritage. We would like to see that uh, everyone uh, help to manage our cultural heritage well in our country and also in the theme of the policy, in the level of the policy in each country. We would like to work with the government and also bring up the uh, awareness of the people in the region for the cultural heritage. Uh -huh. Actually, our program to, uh, for, for this year, because we start in uh, 2019 for the group of the organization for only seven, from the seven country. Uh, we just today, we just confirmed that we have uh, eight, uh, the, 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 other, uh, the, the other news member from Lao PDR. <laughs> uh, that we would like to welcome them. Uh -huh. Marbury is uh, the new newcomer to our uh, board of directors. They're keen on uh, intangible heritage in Laos and also very expert on textile. Uh -huh. So today, and we, we also would like to welcome another two countries from Cambodia and Brunei that we will complete uh, 10 ASEAN countries. Uh -huh. So the program, I just talk about the program. Uh, during the COVID time, we do have, we do arrange two kind of program. One is the clinic. About the clinic program, we would like to see uh, government and the local people and the international and local experts work together uh, to make score, to do the awareness or maybe try to manage uh, cultural management for the uh, sustainable uh, management and for their tourism. I may uh, not quite exactly give you more detail on, on this. Uh, we start with six in Indonesia and one in Plair in Thailand. Uh, and this is the, our pilot project. I do hope that it will be success in the term of a local people and international and local expert and the government work together. That's what we aim for. And the other program is our Shadham. Shadham is very quite famous now, right? Uh, today is the, uh, what should I say, city number six. Uh, Shadham is the chai tea, like, you know, uh, we pick up the afternoon time to be like a tea time in the afternoon. Uh, we would like the theme of the this uh, Shadham, we would like to bring up our uh, knowledge, our traditional knowledge uh, about how they can manage with the uh, climate change problem. Uh, we, ex we think that in the past, I don't know how they do, uh, and now we face with the problem and we, we expect that maybe something in the past might help us to manage the future better. Uh, actually, the full name of this thing is Building Climate Resiliency Through Local Community Wisdom. Uh, the speaker in this series will be chosen from the, the friends in our ASEAN country. Uh -huh. Today we will have uh, Ms. Katrini Kubontruber. Uh -huh. She will give a talk on authenticity and cultural value in cultural heritage conservation, a case, a case of much about it, houses program in Tobulan. The talk will be moderated by Mrs. Somlak Jalan, the Sam Society Council member and director of Senior Spa Fa Bangkok. Please enjoy the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Kim Kanita, uh, for your introduction of me. Uh, and uh, good afternoon to everyone out there. Uh, Swadika from Bangkok. Uh, every month, Sicha will bring you interesting story about cultural heritage on dealing with our cultural heritage in the region the examples of successful management, 
or the problems that our cultural heritage has been facing. Or sometimes um, uh, under our big theme, we want to uh, inform our viewers about local wisdom for climate resiliency because uh, uh, climate change has been a very big topic on the, this planet. Therefore, we would like uh, us, our cultural heritage sector, to be aware of that and whatever we can do to help us uh, be resilient to the climate change. For this month in May, we also have another interesting topic. This time is from Indonesia, which will be presented by none but our own vice chairman of CICHA, the Southeast Asian Cultural Heritage Alliance, Ms. Katrini Kubontubu. Her topic is on authenticity and cultural values in cultural heritage conservation by using a case of Machpa Hit Houses program in Trovilan as her main focus of the presentation that she will have today. But let me tell you about Ms. Katrini. Uh, she, uh, her academic field is in planning and architecture. She's graduated in urban and regional planning for her bachelor's degree from the Institute Technology in Bandung, Indonesia, in 1996. And just after her uh, bachelor's degree, she went on to Belgium to get her master's degree from the Department of Architecture of uh, KU Leuven in Belgium in 1997. Right now, she is working on her doctorate degree uh, at the School of Architecture planning and policy development at the same uh, institution, that is the Institute of Technology Bandung. Through her uh, career after graduated uh, from the university and uh, right now working on her doctorate degree, she has been uh, working closely to heritage. She has developed strong experience in the field of heritage through her activities in developing heritage organizations in West Sumatra, Bali, Jakarta, and several other Indonesian cities. So that's why she will give us the talk on uh, cultural heritage today. Currently, she is uh, the president of the Indonesian Heritage Trust, uh, a board member of executive committee of international of national trust organization, which is based in London, uh, aside from being a vice chairman of uh, CICHA. She has been acknowledged as climate leader from climate reality leaders corps since September, 2020. Uh, hearing her quality of uh, everything that she has been working on, I think we just can't wait to hear her talk. But before I give the floor to her, let me remind all of you, uh, our viewers, that the presentation will be approximately 30 to 45 minutes. So you are invited to send your questions by pushing the button on the question box below. At the end of her presentation, we will select the questions for our speakers to answer for the period of approximately 10 to 15 minutes uh, within our time uh, uh, before it runs out. So without further ado, uh, I would like to invite you the floor is yours now, Katrini, please. Thank you, Somlak. Swadikap for all of you in Bangkok, Ms. Kanita, and also Somlak, and other team there. And also, selamat sore. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh for our college 
friends in Indonesia. I think so you give a, a very detailed introduction for me, so much. <laughs> yeah, but I'm uh, just also the ordinary people that is uh, like a heritage and would like to uh, see all the things inherited from the past. And uh, the presentation today is also part of uh, the legacy uh, that we received from our ancestors. So allow me to start the presentation. Uh, so first of all, what I can uh, say here, this moment, something is uh, not work. Uh, I will see first. Okay, this moment. Yeah, okay. I hope uh, everybody can see my screen now. And then I will put in the presentation mode. Yeah. So this presentation is based heavily on the work of my doctoral research. Uh, the title is Cultural Significance and Contestation in the Conservation of Non-Intact Cultural Heritage Site Conservation. And uh, I took a case study of the former Majapahit Royal Capital at Trowulan, which is uh, currently, this is also not prepared for the School of Architecture, Planning and Policy Depart Department in Institute of Technology in Bandung. Under my uh, supervisors, uh, Professor Wijaya, Dr. Denny, and then Professor Peter Carey. And this is also uh, based on a paper of my article published in the International Journal of Heritage Studies, or IGHS. Uh, the title is Meeting the Past in the Present, Authenticity and Cultural Value in Heritage Conservation at the 14th century Majapahit Heritage Site in Trawulan, Indonesia. And I will give you the link that uh, in detail, maybe uh, later I will put in the chat, uh, the link to see uh, of this paper. But for this time being, uh, my presentation uh, keyword are uh, conservation, authenticity, cultural value, uh, redefinitions, and also uh, reinterpretation and also my pet houses and a trouble land. And the content, uh, the first section of this presentation uh, review uh, the changing paradigms and uh, that uh, we will see here, how, uh, sorry, uh, how uh, we can have a concentrating on the importance of the cultural value and the new uh, paradigms of uh, authenticity. And the second one uh, here, I also uh, would like to see uh, how uh, the how, how briefly uh, the introduction about the Trollan Majapahit site and also how the Majapahit Houses program in Trollan. The final section draw conclusion as a cautionary tale or project elsewhere. And first of all, my introduce uh, Indonesia. Uh, I believe. The participant is not only from Indonesia and our friends from Shicha, that comprise of other countries, not only uh, our friends in Bangkok, but uh, also Vietnam, uh, Singapore, Philippines, and other part of the Southeast Asia. So uh, we all a big family. And then uh, we understand uh, formally Indonesia uh, is white, but uh, in it was in the, the glimpse of Majapahit era. But for this time being, uh, still big also. We have more than uh, 500 cities. We have also more than 17,000 island. And then so more than uh, 265. Uh, and now it's becoming more the population in Indonesia, which consists also more than 700 local languages and also extraordinary collection of heritage. And uh, the diversity of uh, Indonesia uh, we understand that uh, there are so many uh, extraordinary heritage here, and so we divide it into three, the natural heritage, the cultural heritage, and the sojourner heritage, or the cultural landscape, uh, as uh, we declare it uh, from 2003 in the Indonesian Heritage Conservation Charta. But still uh, a big question also for us, and this is also keep changing because uh, in the past time, we understand conservation is 
is uh, the works dealing of how we can uh, make the ship back to the former uh, ship in the previous time. But uh, uh, as the dynamic things uh, of the uh, knowledge and the multidisciplines uh, uh, information, uh, we are now uh, having also an understanding about the conservation is the process of looking after a place so as to retain its cultural significance. So this is uh, I quote from Bura Charter. That is uh, give us wider understanding about what is conservation. It's not about only restoration, but also some things uh, wider dealing with all activities of our life in the context of environment. So uh, there is also a critics uh, in architecture, uh, uh, in conservation, sorry. It's about, uh, we understand how until recently uh, determining cultural significance in conservation has been for the most part on the basis of fabric and link physical aspects. So totally, if we see uh, cultural heritage, it's uh, really, we can see easily visually the physical things of it. That's uh, uh, also uh, the first critic. And similarly with the regard to understanding of authenticity, this also has been uh, mostly on physical rather than non-physical aspect. Sometimes we have to be reminded that uh, we have uh, extraordinary values, not only the physical appearance. And uh, I also quote here Smith from uh, 2006, uh, she's criticized the uh, situation of the conservation uh, under what uh, she called the authorized heritage discourse or AHD. So she criticized uh, the legitimacy of conservation efforts dominated by physical aesthetic and the authority of expert with limited understanding of heritage requirement. So her concerns were supported and further expanded by other conservation experts, include also the one in Indonesia and I believe also in your country. That is uh, the discourse to support this summarized here under the title Expanding Heritage Discourse or ESB. So if we can see here the picture of the changing paradigm in heritage conservation is formerly uh, we understand that conservation only dealing with monuments or historical building, but now it's becoming wider to uh, also deal with place, with the cultural landscape. And now we also deal with the climate change. So this is happening uh, uh, really in our current life. And then so formally, uh, we only talk about the abandoned site, but now we talk not only about the site, but also the sustainable community. So we also talk about the people, not only the object. And if we uh, understand formally, we always uh, make a priority of the physical component, but now we also included the living tradition. And uh, we, uh, in the previous time, really uh, having the center management the, from the central government for everything's uh, central in the operation, but now it's uh, really open for the participatory involvement for the aid uh, management. And uh, this illustration also uh, makes strong how we have changed the paradigm in conservation. So formerly we only talk about the high culture, but now we also include a folk heritage from the ordinary people that have uh, extraordinary values and it can be concluded as our heritage. So changing is also include from single object-based conservation to be the area-based conservation and this is also include what we talk about environment, the climate change, and all the things dealing with our ecology. So the uh, so the changing is having the impact about how we understanding about the cultural value and also authenticity. First of all, fabric-based heritage consists not only of the physical and material things, but also the discourses which simultaneously construct and reflect the time hallowed practices. So this is also according to Smith. But other experts also saying that change is an inherent aspect of heritage. So conservation is just not about recovery of some original form, but about the management of change. So 
everything uh, in the world is changing. So we believe that. So this is including effort to shape and control the future. And the third one is the concept of authenticity needs to be understood with reference to cultural value. Uh, this is said by the expert from Jockey Leto, Lennon and Taylor, and also uh, Sumo. So this is uh, what uh, we talk here is about uh, the heritage can be uh, having the impact of the environment, of the climate change, of the natural disaster that can be destroyed, it can be lost or threatened. And uh, this is uh, that we admit that sometimes it's also neglect, ignorance, incompetence, and mismanagement for short-term gain and by a special interest group. So there is also an impact of climate change and particularly the natural disaster. And there are cases when such sites are badly damaged, destroyed, or even still buried underground. Thus, uh, there is a crucial need to develop a new perspective in confirming authenticity. That is, it's not only based on physical entities, but also cultural value. So uh, I come with a big question. Uh, and uh, I would like to put it in the case of the Majapet Houses program in Trowulan for a case study. So this research would like to interpret and redefine the authenticity that is not only a matter of physical materiality, but also has to do with identifying cultural value which sustain the memory of the past. Yeah. And uh, location of the Trowulan in Indonesia is in the uh, province of East Java. You can see here, uh, the mark here, the red uh, point is the location of the Trowulan that believe as the formal royal uh, kingdom, or we can also say Majapahit Empire. So this is the territory of Majapahit Empire. It's not only uh, the location of Indonesia in the current time, but also included uh, foreign countries, including uh, several areas in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Burma, and also Singapore. It's uh, so quiet, so that's why maybe we are so acquaintance now, because we are in the formerly was a big family. And if we talk about uh, heritage, it's really have a tight connection with the history. So when we see now uh, the non-intact heritage left by Majapahit, uh, in this current time, and we could not see all the physical things appear, but uh, we can see, we can see also how was uh, the grandeur in the previous time. So here is uh, the diagram that uh, I divided the diachronic of Majapahit into uh, three big groups. So the first one is the golden era. Uh, 1293 until 1389. So this is uh, the grandeur of Majapahit in the uh, century of the 13th until 14th. And then the dim era after that and until the colonial period and the reappear area in the 1815 until now. And uh, I still can see this reappear area because uh, somehow we also have to be admitted uh, some part of the Trowland is still also neglect by us. And also the condition of the cultural heritage in Trowulan is not only the intact one that we can see uh, obviously, but most of them are non-intact. In Indonesia, we have the word uh, the utuh for the intact and then ta utuh for the non-intact. And so uh, we also starting to dig the history and all the document the data about uh, to see the background of the Majapahit. And we having so many uh, research about uh, Trowulan, about Majapahit, starting from the colonial period. And we also can uh, learn from the artifacts left from that era. So this is one of the artifacts, the relief as uh, the archaeological funding. That is, uh, show us how is the landscape in the left side and then uh, how was uh, the building on that period. And so we only have uh, the record, the historical record, this is Negara Kertagama from the Majapahit Empire. 
It's a book of song illustrated the location of palace, houses, market, and other city infrastructure. And uh, somehow uh, a researcher also would like to have uh, uh, taking all the documents uh, to a freestyle drawing. So this is one of the example how a freestyle drawing by a local community using his fantasy based on Negara Kertagama. So where's the location of the palace, uh, the guard, and then the temple and other infrastructure of the city on that time. And so we also have a map of Rowlands uh, by Wardenar on the year of 1815. And uh, 1921 also from the indigenous people. It's not only from the colonial, from the international expert, but we have also the local ones. And this is the uh, current one and it's very important is uh, the research that make a georeference map by Gompot, Hack, and Peter Carey in the year of uh, 2015 or 2014, sorry. And this is so us uh, how uh, starting from the Negara Kertagama and then uh, the oldest map and uh, coming with uh, the GPS uh, accurate situation. And we have this georeference uh, with the data of uh, the trollen. And then this is uh, very good to be uh, moving forward. That is starting about, we talk about Majapahit as fairy tale, but now it's coming to the real Majapahit. Uh, it was there in the practice time. And this is also one of the research also uh, bringing up about the special model of Majapahit Royal Court by uh, Pak Herman Islamat, Pak Bondan. Uh, this is also showing uh, all the philosophy bands in the previous time, inherited as a legacy to us uh, in the current time. Uh, one of it is about Majapahit houses, because we will talk about uh, how is this program. Uh, the idea is also starting from the relief, showing the house, the type, the shape of the houses uh, in the previous time. It started by Asripur Osman in the 1999, so the research uh, done to uh, try to make the prototype of the Majapahit houses. And uh, in the year of 2014, the government launched the Majapahit Houses Program or MHP uh, with the objective of enhancing uh, Trollan's appeal as a heritage site. And under this program, villagers will offer grants to construct a five times four square meter wood and red brick facade on their existing residential dwelling. The design of the facade and the materials were purported to be authentic. It's authentic in the quote, yeah? To Majapahit 14th century heyday based uh, legally on a scholar research by Osman, as I mentioned before, from the images found on local stone relief in a number of central of East Java, uh, temples dating the 9th to 14th century. So uh, in this map, we can see also a program to build uh, 600 facades was funded by provincial and regency government in the ratio of uh, 85-15. So local decree, uh, this is based on the local decree by the region of Mojokerto, the uh, region of the area. So the villagers were free to opt into the scheme. And in the year of 2014 until 15, the first beds were constructed on almost 300 private dwellings. And uh, with uh, 200 of those units in Bejijong village and then other uh, part of the villages in uh, the area of Trollan. So this is also a second batch. Another 300 was constructed the year after. So then uh, we will see, this is uh, the condition of Majapahit houses. So most of the several hundred residents in the program are now deserted and unused. So unfortunately, this is the condition. So the program uh, fell for short of the target of 600 because some local people refuse to participate for a variety of reasons. And it is assumed that the failure of this program stem from its design and its application. And in particular, the program adopted a very simple view of authenticity without paying attention to the cultural value of the site and the locality. This mistake was a result of the top-down design, which made no attempt to involve 
the local community. And it is also argued that these two aspects of the value are closely related. The importance now uh, attached to cultural value in the approach to heritage conservation demand that uh, local communities that understand the value of their site and have a vested interest in its part and future must be intimately involved in the project of heritage conservation. So there is no participation on the uh, preparation and the planning of the program. And then uh, I made a survey in 2017 that is shown that the vast majority of Majapahit houses stand as empty, silent witnesses to a failed government program. Most have yet to be used by the owner. There are signboards for sale or rent in front of the several houses. It is indicated that around 90% of all recently constructed Majapahit houses in villages are empty. During our field survey, we found only 20 units, or I think it's uh, approximately 10% out of the 200 built used for economic purposes, including six homestay or overnight units uh, for our sort and also uh, six units used to be uh, groceries, uh, two units for the food style and uh, two other. So this is in the year of 2017. And then the result of observation through interview with community members and uh, a focus group discussion during that year, 2017. So first a quarter of the participants criticized the limited budget and lack of follow-up after the construction. Due to the limited budget allocated for local building subvention grants, the participant could not afford to install toilets and other necessary facilities. So this means that the houses could not be rendered functional, still less optimal. And then at our FGDs, the local community articulated a strong desire to receive guidance from local and national government to enable them to make the best possible use of their Majapahit houses. Then second, uh, from the FTP, I also found out 70 of the 100 participants criticized the program for its top-down design, lack of participation and failure to appreciate local cultural values. The MHP or the Majapahit Houses Program is not a form of reconstruction. So rather it is a totally new construction based on supposed authentic house design. Although the program was conceived as a local project, it was implemented top down with no community participation. And the, supposed, and the supposedly authentic design ignored the view of local residents regarding the cultural values of the current home and the former royal city. The resident also dispute the program authenticity on ground that the streets of the ancient city were unlikely to have been lined with houses with a uniform facade. So they totally similar facade uh, in one row of the street. So there is no visual harmony between the Majapahit facade and the present day Trawulan houses. The facade seem to have been stuck on the local dwelling with no attempt to create an aesthetically placing architectural relationship between the two. And so this is uh, so uh, we also would like to highlight there is uh, also no interest in the resident perception of the historic and cultural value of the site. And the fact that the original MHP design had supposedly been based on rigorous academic research was almost totally irrelevant for them, for the people. So never once did they receive any explanation regarding the authenticity claim in the design and this resulted in a sense of apathy with the majority of the local community becoming steadily alienated and unwilling to support the program. How could these values be expressed in the design process? These critics ask, if the local Bajijang community, so this is one of the village community there, had not been involved at any stage in the program. So that's the matter of uh, participation. And uh, here also, uh, for some percent of the government interviews, uh, I would like to bring up uh, what is their concern. The principal concern was to complete the project on time and on budget. So issues such as cultural value and authenticity scarcely surface. And furthermore, non-physical aspect of the project 
play no part in the planning, execution, monitoring, or evaluation. So ensuring that the houses embodied Majapahit value was an irrelevance for them. And this almost complete lack of understanding on the part of the officials involved created the condition under which the Majapahit houses were used for purposes far removed from recreating the finest glories of 14th century Majapahit. And some become food stalls, garage, homestays, while the majority become empty monuments to misguided approach to conservation. And today, after my research on 2017, uh, years after that, several improvement is initiated by a group of communities. They facilitate the MHP owners to optimize their houses for homestays, galleries, and other socioeconomic activities. But since the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, when it hit us last year, then these efforts are stuck without significant progress. And so that's all about uh, the conditions uh, happening in uh, Majapahit Houses program. Our conclusion here is, uh, I can underline here that heritage sites uh, in troll and as a case study, so as how this notion of authenticity and cultural values have come into conflict with present day conservation practices. And uh, secondly, uh, I found here flexibility is the key to the development of balanced heritage policy. One way of achieving this is by giving local communities the chance to mediate their own heritage related disputes and personally participate in the practice of heritage conservation. So only then uh, will a common policy be achieved and heritage experts and also local communities can find a way of working together to achieve sustainable outcomes. And the effort to redefine our understandings uh, of authenticity, uh, the new authenticity should be based on the local community's ownership of their own heritage. Such an informed acknowledgement of cultural value in living tradition adds an authentic spirit to the physical form of a given heritage style. So a sense of place can arise from a connection between the physical and non-physical aspect of a site. But there must also be room for flexibility in expanding the way in which the concept of authenticity and cultural value is interpreted among stakeholders. It is our hope that this study will stimulate a more wide ranging debate and also invite broader argument on how to manage such heritage conservation by integrating the twin prism of authenticity and cultural value. And based on our experience at Trowland, we can conclude that meeting the past in the present can be achieved only through a form of conservation which successfully integrates authenticity and cultural value, as well as a skillful marriage of a site physical and non-physical aspect. So uh, thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, and then uh, now I would like to share also a video, it's only one minute video uh, to uh, give you an illustration about how is Trowland. Well, thank you very much, uh, Katrini. And uh, 
it's very interesting. At first, I was uh, a bit uh, confused how you're going to uh, present this, but the more I look and listen to you, I become more understanding and see the picture. And here, there are some questions uh, for you. Uh, this one is from uh, Mr. Brick Kayan. Uh, the question is, how to adopt sustainable or low carbon repair for built heritage in general and in the Mashpahit houses, including in Trebulan, in particular in order to address authenticity and climate change in balance. He's from uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, University of Malaya. Thank you. Would you like to answer that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for uh, Brit Kayan for your uh, very good question and really uh, it's a it's a uh, important about the climate change and uh, as we understand uh, previously Majapahit also uh, destroyed not only because of the war but uh, also because of the natural disaster so uh, there is a series there was series of uh, volcano eruption on the time that makes uh, also uh, the destroy of this great empire and this time being uh, there are also a um, threat from the flood uh, because of the the water management uh, mm. problems and then also the heavy uh, rain in the rain season and this is also some things we have to tackle i mean uh, before we talk about uh, the low carbon and all the things but uh, this is also uh, some things uh, really close to us about how to manage the environment uh, uh, starting from the basic things for instance, uh, more and more visitor. I mean, if I talk before the pandemic, yeah, the visitor came to Trowland and they have uh, rabies and all the things that uh, damage the environment. This is also already one problem. And then secondly, also uh, because uh, the site is uh, unfortunately is not really uh, managed in a good hand. So somehow in the year of twenty. 12 until 2014, we have a case uh, when the local government gave a, uh, the investor to build a steel company in this cultural heritage area. So we can imagine how uh, the steel factory can be uh, a part of the cultural heritage site. So this is also uh, the uh, problem of uh, policies and uh, if we talk about the community so the people there uh, they try to protect their environment in their good way but still because of the location is uh, in their really in the part close by to the volcanoes there this having a treat by the natural disaster and if we talk about the low carbons uh, it's still uh, far away because uh, uh, the area is uh, more uh, have to be deal with how they can be conserved uh, and then protected through this disaster. And uh, the way of uh, also how we have a conservation program also uh, having a deal with the climate change, it's still not yet implemented there. And uh, as we understand, uh, we have also uh, knowledge about, for instance, like Taj Mahal in India. And there's already, uh, they have a management of uh, vehicle can be approached to this area. It's not uh, the one with using the gasoline as a fuel, but uh, have to be uh, to minimize the carbon uh, for the pollution. But in, in Trollands, uh, it's still far away if we talk about how to have the uh, minimize the, uh, the carbon use 
as a low carbon there. And uh, the things really in front of our eyes is the problem to protect the environment from all the things such as that I mentioned before, from the rabies, from, from the investor, and uh, from uh, the unfair policies to the cultural heritage. I hope uh, this answer, I mean, so I tried to uh, provide you the picture about Trolland. It's still uh, a lot of homework to be done there. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Katrini. I hope, uh, um, Big Kayan, you will see the picture and uh, of what uh, Katrini is trying to explain. And I, I, I can see the picture because sometimes with the policy from top down and sometimes without looking at the problem uh, clearly, uh, solution sometimes not the way that it should that it has been done and like you said how come the steel factory coming into the cultural heritage site and i think that's the problem with many many cultural uh, heritage sites in uh, i'm going to say in southeast asia but i'm sure that this is not a problem only in southeast asia it happens uh, many times. So you have uh, another question from Helen Jarvis. Uh, she's thank you, you for a fascinating talk. And her question is that, do you have any pictures you can show us of what the houses looked like before the Machpahit period? And do you have any ideas of what might have been a better approach to introducing authenticity to the site of a living community? Katrina. Yeah. Okay, first of all, so I will so back again to my previous slide. So here is uh, the condition of the houses uh, of the peoples uh, in Trawulan. So just uh, simple houses, some, somehow it's a bit slum also. And it's just uh, the Majapahit houses is like uh, go down the earth like this, suddenly in front of their houses. Maybe here we can see this is uh, the existing houses and then the Majapahit houses is like this. So that is the, the condition that uh, I can show you. Uh, how is the exist uh, people houses there before they have uh, the program to detach a new uh, shape of the facade uh, in front of their houses. And so according to the, uh, uh, your questions uh, about uh, how we can uh, see how, is the, how it should be the authentic uh, Majapahit houses, I think it's not a matter of uh, I mean, so we have to come to the conclusion, this is the one is the uh, shape that uh, we uh, agree, all of us. But uh, the important is the process. The process uh, to discuss about what is, uh, what is the form, what is the design of Majapahit houses. Because uh, then we can come to uh, sit together with all the experts, all the resources, come with the uh, document, uh, the accurate data. This is uh, the detail, the background that we can have to consider if we design a uh, Majapahit houses. And then uh, uh, the process have to be involved of also the participant, uh, the local people, because uh, they are the one that will live in that houses. So, uh, the discussion is really important, and then uh, they make deal, make an agreement uh, uh, among the together. So this is uh, the one that lacking in this uh, program because government just pick one of the design, one of the research, and then implement it as a project, and then force the community to live with it. So. This is the term about uh, also the re-understanding of authenticity is also changing. It's not the authenticity, it have to be really similar with the former time, 
it can be uh, receive and welcome the dynamic changing as long as we all agree with that. So this is uh, some things uh, that I try to uh, uh, conclude from my research that we also have to be understand the authenticity believed by the people from the uh, maybe the century of uh, the 15th century is different than the authenticity that uh, we understand in this current time because of the dynamic things. Well, uh, because there are many more questions coming in. So I'm just going to go uh, to these questions. One is from Cambodia, uh, Konki U. She said that she's sorry that she's missing your point. According to your survey, what kind of architectural design that residents want to live in? Thank you so much. I think this is related with uh, my last answer. Eh? <laughs> that is uh, the one that uh, the resident would like to live in is uh, uh, no matter the designs with all the limitation, but uh, as long they can have the participation or involvement uh, in the discussion to decide the design. Yeah. For instance, according to the survey, they are uh, really uh, sorry to see that uh, why this design is chosen. This is the design if according to the history is uh, the, the low caste, maybe you understand that we have a divided uh, community in the previous time according to the rule uh, of the people in the in the kingdom for instance the house for the house for the people work for the palace is different than the house of the ordinary people so this mm. is uh, one of the uh, also perception of the community why the one choose by the government is the lowest one so it have to be more uh, attractive, more uh, rich in the design and other things. But back uh, for me, the point is uh, involve them in the discussion. All right. OK, there is another question from Dr. Brian Shaw from uh, our Science Society member. He said that he's a bit confused about the idea of flexible authenticity. I suppose all past cultures are being reinterpreted in a new context but could you kindly say a bit more on this concept thank you yeah i think it's also similar with uh, my previous answer that uh, we'll talk about the understanding of uh, authenticity uh, it will be different that uh, the one uh, understanding with uh, our uh, grandparents of our uh, previous one because uh, in conservation we believe that uh, the thing that uh, we can conserve is only the change. So uh, the words keep changing and also the knowledge, the understanding also changing. So the ones uh, uh, now is uh, we're talking about the authenticity. There is a criticize like uh, Smith mentioned in through the AHD. It's not only uh, authenticity related with the physical things, but the authenticity now is more about the non-physical thing. It's more about the values. So uh, because uh, if we uh, also understand more and more uh, cultural heritage object, it will not uh, intact in this time being because of the age of the cultural heritage, or also because of the, uh, having the impact from the natural disaster or uh, they already destroyed. So we don't have to be back to the former shape or former appear of the cultural heritage object but uh, more important we conserve the value so this is uh, the reinterpretation of the authenticity is again it's not about physical things hope it's answered well i think uh, many people are having problems with uh, flexible authenticity. That's why a lot of uh, uh, people are asking this uh, clarification. Another uh, a question is from Vietnam, I guess, uh, from Nguyen Kieng Lo. What 
would you be what would be your recommendations for non-material conservation such as stories memories and practices within the current socio-economic environment yeah thank you one kiang lao yeah from vietnam <laughs> I think so we also having a similar situation that uh, we have uh, really uh, incredible uh, good stories and also recording about memory and all the tradition practices uh, in our uh, previous uh, ancestor. And now it's also, uh, we, are, we are not uh, saying that it's similar things that we are doing now with the tradition. Of course, we have the dynamic things. We have uh, uh, the new creation from us that also can be our future heritage to be our legacy in the future generation. And uh, the ones uh, that uh, we can uh, have in here, how is about the story and memory <laughs> and all the things in relation with uh, our current uh, uh, environments, uh, there are so many uh, valuable things, a philosophy to taking care about the environment, to deal with, uh, for instance, the spatial plans uh, for having uh, the, the pattern of uh, how we uh, design the city. This also coming from uh, the stories, the philosophy that can be implemented in a current time. Because uh, once uh, things uh, believe in our former ancestral life is the balance of the world. So the balance between the tangible and intangible, the balance between uh, the people activities and also the environment. So this is the one can be uh, implemented uh, not only, I believe, in, not only in this current time, but can be also uh, as a legacy for the future generation. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, the person who asked the last question, he's, he or she said that he's from Singapore, not Vietnam. So both of us oh, uh, misunderstood. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we all family uh, then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so another. Uh, Question is from Mimi Savitri. What if the house style mentioned by the community so recent and new style? Since it won't demonstrate the Machapahit in the past, it should be agreed totally or what else? Thank you. Yeah, Ibu Mimi from uh, Yogyakarta, I believe this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, it can be, uh, it, it's really depend. I mean, uh, uh, I think it's also new for us, yeah. Uh, we could not also uh, force uh, the community to receive uh, uh, what uh, we suggest for them. So this is the design, you have to do this and that. But uh, it's, it's really depend on the process of the uh, discussion. So how we uh, involve the peoples and then uh, we also uh, having their idea about what are significant or not to be uh, inherited and then uh, implement in the current uh, life. So this is this is uh, I understand something new uh, among us. Yeah. I mean uh, this is uh, a new research, uh, and also I try to uh, make a link in the in the previous changing of paradigm in conservation. That is in the previous, we really only believe conservation is only all the monument restoration. All the things have to be back in the similar form in the previous time. But uh, we have to accept also there is a new paradigm that is uh, widely opened and welcome the ideas from the current uh, people's perception about what is uh, the important for them what is significant and then put it together because they are the ones who will have sense of belonging of what are they will design it and uh, they will make a function of it. So I think uh, that's my last. I sound like you're still mute. 
I don't want to disturb you, so I mute myself. Sorry. Uh, there are no more questions, but I do have questions. I would like uh, to ask, who are these people who are living in Machpahit nowadays? Are they uh, people, descendants from the past, or are they newcomers? Yeah, this is really uh, totally different than Ayutthaya in the, your place. Yeah. Because uh, Ayutthaya uh. is now still living with the people with the same religions. And uh, uh -huh. that's why uh, the temple there are still uh, the living one. But in right. Thailand, uh, we have the history when the empire uh, have been destroyed. So all the destruction mm. also make the people run from uh, the Thailand to other side in Java or even uh, also go, uh, went to Bali on that time. And so this is uh, like an empty city. And then it started to be alive when the colonial period started uh, the sugar industry at the era of the revolution industry. And then started people came there and uh, they are not a descendant, the original one there, but uh, through my survey, they, uh, I mean, they even, uh, I mean, it's not all of them, but the majority of them, the people live in Trowulan, can uh, can they uh, I mean they, they they really they really feel that they are people with the blood of Majapahit because mm. uh, they also doing the tradition somehow mm. they they say that uh, they they are not uh, they are not a part of the family of Majapahit but they can feel that they are part of Majapahit so this they're is, related yes. <laughs> Yes, it's they much feel. because of the environment because they are living I in know. the area with the atmosphere. Yeah, but they have uh, no blood of Majapahit actually. Okay, well, uh, I think uh, your talk has raised, raised awareness of uh, about conservation and uh, how should well, I mean, but I think uh, the topic of uh, including cultural values in the conservation, I think that happens in many, any, many conservation approach nowadays. It's just that the problems that occur in each uh, country may be different, or not just each country, at each site, uh, is different, like uh, the question that I just asked you, that uh, some archaeological sites or historical sites, descendants have been living there all, you know, coming down. But some are changing through times, uh, through many periods, through many religions. So that could be some of the topic that uh, I think academic researchers can discuss more, but uh, I'm sure that your uh, presentation has raised awareness uh, among all of them. So uh, I think that if there are no more questions, uh, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Katrini, for your uh, very uh, inspiration uh, talk that could lead to more discussion uh, and more awareness of people who want to do uh, some conservation work. Uh, and even for the policy maker, if they want to do something within the uh, premises of the uh, site. So thank you very much uh, from all of us. And since you are Sisha too, so I thank you that you take this uh, uh, responsibility. Be proud of you. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> I think, uh, well, it's about time that we have. Actually, we have a little bit more, but since there are no questions, uh, I think I would like to say that uh, 
Uh, aside from Katrini, our speaker, I would like to say thank you to our behind the scenes staff who have been working uh, to make this uh, presentation and this program alive at all time. Uh, we are six time already, and I'm sure that there will be more coming. So uh, stay tuned uh, for our next program, uh, which will be announced uh, on our uh, Facebook and uh, through your email, okay? And uh, what else? <laughs> uh, oh. I have to remind you that for those of you who haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, you please do because I don't think you want to miss any of our program. It will be uh, uh, online again in YouTube on YouTube channel and also on our Facebook. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, and see you again uh, next month. Till then, bye. Bye.